Hello. I expect no one to be here because I've uh, given <laughs> zero warning. And uh, so I'm going to enjoy my hot chocolate for a little bit. Now, what prompted this was the astonishing. Um, well, we have one thumbs up. We have a visitor. Show yourself. <laughs> ah, four of you. Hello, Douglas and David Perkins. So, yeah, I, I was um, I was just saying what prompted this stream, this impromptu stream. Hello, Chad. Chad's one of my favorite people at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, eight of you here already, my lucky number. Um, yeah, so what prompted this was this truly astonishing um, little flame war <laughs> that happened on Social Galactic. And it was quite, quite hilarious in a number of ways. So somebody posted um, a, a news headline about how the Lutheran Church has got their first transgender pastor who is married to whatever, somebody of the same sex they are, um, and they've got two adopted uh, brown children or something. And um, so some guy posted this and said, you know, I think the Reformation is complete or something to that effect. And somebody else uh, screen capped that and then put something like um, down vote for a Christian, up vote for a Lutheran. <laughs> and at one point, there were, there were like six votes for Lutheranism and everybody else was down voting. In other words, everybody else was saying, no, we're Christian, not Lutheran. And um, But now it's like there's only two people saying they're Lutherans. And... No coincidence, they're both bears. <laughs> you know, it's like... But the, the, the astonishing thing is that the level of retardation demonstrated by the, the people who carried on arguing, it was, I don't know, infantile, just wrong on everything they said, and it was pathetic. It was to the point that it's just like, well, there's, there's, no, there's really no point to arguing with these guys. But I gotta give credit to um, a guy called Jordan. I think was one one of the ones that carried on quite a while, and Chad was the other one. And um, <laughs> they just—I don't know. It was at first it was sort of like oh, this is boring, and then it sort of became entertaining in a dwarf throwing contest kind of way. <laughs> you know, it was it was just <laughs> amazing how dumb the, 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 the Protestant side was. It was just unreal. And it, this thing has gone on for, I don't know, must be like 300 comments now. So there's no way I can summarize it, but it was just, oh. The, the Protestants just basically leveled accusations, straw men, said the Asperger like, council was Catholic. You know, they just outright lied. <laughs> It was just, and, and their so-called gotchas were like, you're stupid. Oh, you just follow the Kurgan. Oh, you know, it was just really bad. But um, one of the comments towards the end that I, I really thoroughly enjoyed was, um, I think it's a guy called j Dog, if I remember right, who said, um, gentlemen, this has been entertaining. And I'll only add one more thing. The IQ gap is real. <laughs> <laughs> to which I replied, in this case, it's more like an IQ chasm, you know, an abyss. Of, it's it's not a little gap. It's literally valles marineris, <laughs> you know. It's it's the Mariana Trench of gaps. It's really bad. So that was the hilarious part. But as a general um, concept, you know, it, it just reinforces more and more my point that you have to be mentally deficient to be to be a Protestant, really, because 
you know, if you're a Protestant based on your absence of information, your general ignorance of church, church history and so on, you could say, well, you know, I could almost forgive that. But the fact is, you can't. Really, you can't. Because if you've read the Bible, if you're any kind of a Christian, I mean, even if you're a slack Bible reader, like myself, you know, I'm a slack Bible reader. I'm not, I'm not one of these guys that can quote the Bible at you and whatever. But it's in there, you know, that it clearly says Jesus will be with the church till the end of time. Um, so, in order to be a Protestant, you have to assume that Jesus lied. Because, you know, and plus, keep in mind, the Protestants are always screaming and shouting like that absolute retard, James White, about sola scriptura. And, well, sola scriptura, by James White's definition, is that only scripture is God-breathed. And it took 1,500 years to put together. Uh, what? <laughs> so, for the first 1,500 years, it was just wrong. Yeah, God-breathed wrong. Because what you're saying, when you're saying that it took 1,500 years, you're saying that Martin Luther put the finishing touches on it. So I've got two questions for you. First question, how do you know when it's done? How do you know that, you know, Caitlyn Jenner, formerly known as Bruce Jenner, isn't suddenly going to take his pen to uh, the Bible and just strike out all those vile, vile things that Paul said about sodomite? I mean... How do you know when it's over? Because James White told you it took 1,500 years? No. But more importantly, and secondly, if it's sola scriptura, why the hell did your guy go and change it? I mean, Luther ripped out seven books out of the Bible and added in the word Jews here and there, you know, because he didn't like the Jews much. But, which, you know, whatever, fair enough. But, you know, he, he went and edited the Bible, you know, to make it fit. That's why I ripped out uh, the book of James, of course. Because uh, salvation by faith alone, not quite what it says in the Bible. So, if you're a Protestant, Jesus lied at least for the first 1,500 years. Because he was just obviously not always there. He wasn't protecting the church. He wasn't protecting scripture. No, a fat German who wanted to have sex with nuns. That guy fixed it. Kim and the other guy, who didn't agree with him to begin with, but then when he wanted to divorce and murder his wives, he decided, yeah, I'm going to agree with the, with the freaky monk who wants to bang the nuns. Those guys fixed the Bible. Ah, please. So, you know, even if you didn't know church history or whatever, just on plain, simple logic, being a Protestant makes no sense. Now, I don't spend much time bashing the Protestants because they're so retarded, it's it's not even fun. Um, you know, I've, I've written... Uh, there you go, I'm just going to keep flashing it. I'm going to put it close so you can see. There you go. You can see I've bashed the Catholic Church a lot more um, thoroughly than I have the Protestants. I, I go through the Protestants briefly in, in Believe, and uh, there's a reason for that. Because, you know, Protestantism is absolutely, definitely satanic. I mean, that was the intent. Uh, Protestantism has been the secularization of Christianity, of Catholicism, and has eroded it over the last 500 years. You know, it's, um, it's had its desired effect. And you've got to keep in mind that, you, you know, if you look at this in human um, timelines, then you're sort of saying, oh, but um, everything is corrupted over time. Well, no. The Catholic Church got corrupted uh, from 1958 on very badly. I mean, there was infiltration for a couple of hundred years before that, but, um, you know, it, it got badly corrupted from 1958 on, but the Catholic Church still exists. Instead of a Catholicism, it's still the Catholic Church. So we're still there. Um, as prophesied, you know, just a remnant, But the thing is, um, you know, it, it, like I said, I don't even find... Hello, Grandpa Aurelius. It's been a while. 
I, it's been, you know, it, like I said, it's not even fun. They're, they're just so moronic. It's, and yet, I have to say that the, uh, the act of charity, that's what it was, of, of these great men who just basically bitch slapped Protestants to the tune of 300 comments. <laughs> I mean, uh, one of the things that I do remember that was hilarious is this, this uh, retarded bear, chip bear, I think. It's, it's completely retarded. I mean, he's, he's so moronic, there's no point to even respond to him. And he kept saying, oh, the Kurgan is a liar, the Kurgan is the Kurgan that. You all just do what the Kurgan says. You, you follow your guru. If he told you to get the vaccine, you'd get the vaccine. <laughs> one of the other guys replied. You know, I, I did respond to, I can't remember if it was him or one of the other guys, saying, oh, a bit of projection going on there from so-called men that, you know, add the, the slang term for hairy, large, fat, homosexual to their nickname in, uh, you know, they're bears. We all know that bear, what bear stands for. And uh, you add that to your nickname as a grown man. Mm. And you drink turpentine because your guru tells you to. Mm. And you accuse others of drinking Kool-Aid <laughs> because of what I say. Specifically when, you know, I, I have been quite blatant about the fact that I don't want followers. I want independent thinkers who just happen to think the same way I do. That's why, you know, I named him the Immortals, after Leonidas and his 300. Because Leonidas didn't order any of his bodyguards to, like, go with him at the hot gates to hold back the Persians. They all individually chose that alongside him, independently. And they all, to a man, stood next to him and died, defending, you know, their, their homeland and ultimately Europe. So, quite a bit of a difference there. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, just people saying hello as they come in. <laughs> David Perkins says, You interrupted my Protestant prophecy video. I was being enlightened. <laughs> okay, you can thank me for saving your soul properly and sending I don't know, large bars of gold. Um, yep, Velo says that Protestants are midwits or retarded. I wouldn't even say they rise to the level of midwit. Uh, David Perkins says, I like the argument that claims, well, it was the Talmudic Jews who were the caretakers of the Bible, not the 1,500-year-old church. Oh, right. <laughs> the guys who edited the Bible and who literally say that Jesus is in hell um, in, in a sea of shit. That is what the Talmudic Jews believe. <laughs> so, and then those guys who corrupted the Bible further on, which is why the King James Version is a retarded version, then those guys, what, just passed the stick over to the German guy who then changed it in, a bit more? Ah, you know, if you're going to Gnostic and if you're going to heretic, I suppose, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I wonder what the common faith was before Moses had his experience. No idea. <sighs> Janky Jankles, I think you're in the wrong place. Oh, yeah, Douglas mentions that Rodney Stark's books do a good job of showing how the Reformation, <laughs> inverted commas, was primarily about money and power. Um, I wouldn't say primarily, I would say solely. Literally, no one knew what the uh, theological arguments were. It was about money and power. So, basically, that was it. Um, yeah, I mean, as much as I, I enjoy making fun of Protestants, literally, there's, there's not a lot of, um, I've, I've pretty much said it all, you know, you have to be retarded to be one. Uh, by the way, I've just realized that uh, I have made a little bit of an error in my whole dark side internet here, so let me know if there's a delay, there shouldn't be, but... Um, 
hopefully it's all streaming through. Um, I was also hoping that uh, maybe Woolly Ram would show up because I need to think of him, uh, you know, with the stuff that's going on in Israel, I hope he's all right. Um, oh. Oh, what's this janky McJangles? I think he's about to get banned, but let's see. Let's see what he says. Are the new chosen people actually still Jews or Christians, the new Jewish people? Religion splitting from genetics. I wonder why so many Christians want to fund Israel. I have no idea why Christians want to fund Israel. Uh, the, the current Jews are Pharisees, so I very much doubt they're the chosen people. Um, the current Jews are those who rejected Jesus, and there are Talmudic Jews. Uh, Talmudic Jews are, uh, you know, they follow the Talmud, essentially. <laughs> Pew and Bear says, Reformations should add another sola to their solas. Solamanian power. <laughs> Soladala. <laughs> Very good, LS60. Woolly does work night shifts, uh, some, some nights, some, I don't know. <sighs> oh, I wanted to, I don't think I can do it, it's the phone's downstairs. We collected the first bucket full of cherries from one of our cherry trees that's uh, coming into fruit quite early. We've got a couple of cherry trees scattered around, but um, the one at the top of the property up there is... Um, pretty much coming into it and you've got to be quick about it because birds will eat all the best cherries straight away the little bastards pruning on the olive trees continues painting of the kitchen walls now has begun oh, there's just so much stuff that I'm doing every day that I can't uh, remember all of it I'm just basically talking a little bit while I wait for one of you to tell me if there's any kind of delay, which I hope there isn't, but perhaps there is. Anyway, uh, if you've got questions, shoot them out. It's, uh, it's going to be a random one. Seems like we got 31 of you. I'm very impressed. It seems like we've got the, um, the down voted by surprise. No down thumb yet. Yeah, they're, they're cherries. I actually prefer these cherries. They, they do, um, um, they will go fully red if, if you let them. But they're the, those cherries that are sometimes a little bit yellow-white. And I quite like those. Okay, thank you, Janky. In Idaho. Oh, good God. Don't panic. Don't panic when it drops like that. You know, I always say good night to my uh, loyal supporters. A few of you weakened and dropped out. It's down to 26 from 32, 25. Oh, there's uh, quite a few more. Uh, hello, Jerome. I'm, I'm good. You're writing your paper on set of accounting. Okay, great. I hope that's pro set of accounting. Uh, Stanley Allen. Ah, there's 31 of you. Good, good. No, maybe it was just my on my side. Sorry about that dropping out a little bit. Stanley Allen says, what Gnosticism and what's wrong with it? I hear Marty Leeds talking about it, but I'm too dumb to understand. All right, Stanley. Well, Gnosticism is basically the perversion of Christianity, um, of Catholicism. Uh, it's heresy of all sorts, like saying Jesus was not divine, Jesus didn't die on the cross. Uh, the Trinity doesn't make any sense. That's Gnosticism. You know, it goes by many different names, but the essence of Gnosticism is that there is some secret knowledge that only the elect are entitled to know about. Um, so that's what Gnosticism is, and it's wrong because it is a lie. 
it is an absolute lie, and Gnostics should be burnt at the stake. Um, which brings me to another thing that brought me. Um, I'm, I'm going to read your comments in a minute, but this was actually one of the, uh, on the on the Kurgan channel, some people were talking about, um, oh, shouldn't we, there was uh, one guy saying, um, let me just quickly read it, saying, so, I'm going to adorn my tutu for a second and ask, what do you all think about the approach of antagonism? Uh, well, bit, bit of a silly question to ask that in the Kurgan Telegram chat. As immensely frustrating as Prati logic is, do insults and character attacks to Luther or otherwise make us look like Christ's representatives? There's no need for full kindness either, but what I'm trying to ask is should we argue facts and logic alone? even if we're insulted, even if it's simply seen as a better form of rhetoric. And Chad, who is my kind of Chad, says, what if the insults are facts and logic? Which is what happens a lot of the time when I talk to Protestants and say, oh, you're ad hominem. I'm like, no, I've called you an idiot because you're an idiot. You've demonstrated you're an idiot. Here's how you've done it. And you're a liar. Here's what you've lied about. And, you know, I'm not insulting you. I'm making an observation of fact. Um, and uh, so the, the other guy asks, what examples do you have in mind? And Chad replies, for example, if they say something like the Augsburg Confession is a Catholic document, well, there's no logic you can dig into to, there to refute. They're fundamentally wrong. The only logical conclusions are that they're knowingly deceptive or just an idiot. You have to call a spade a spade. To try and meet that with some kind of benefit of the doubt is disingenuous. I fully agree, and you've expressed it very well, Chad. To give charity where none is warranted to be given, when somebody is behaving like a vicious heretic and a, an attacker of the Catholic faith, is disingenuous. It is a cowardly and a lie. It should not be done. On insults in general, people used to burn at the stake for preaching nonsense. What was the consequence? You didn't have people preaching nonsense unless they truly believed it to their core. Now, an anonymous username says something retarded, and if you hurt his character, he cries foul. Like, dude, grow a pair. If you can't take a little insult when your ancestors were willing to burn at the stake for theirs, it's obviously not important to you. If bad ideas were physically painful again, you'd see all gammas disappear from the internet overnight. I think Chad has said it all. The personal approach of pointing out that they're fucking morons is always acceptable. So, um, the other guy countered, like, well, however, it did give an argument that could be refuted as incorrect without the necessary conclusion that it was a lie. And Chad says, I might agree, if it didn't double down and say it's in accordance with Catholic doctrine. Was that just him not knowing? No. That was a, let me cross my fingers and hope nobody knows I'm making that up. Exactly right. Which is why you should curb stomp these liars into the ground at every opportunity. Uh, let me see. Uh, P1 Bear says, I was looking a bit into the Malachi Martin stuff. He had good intuition, it seems, but he still claimed antipopes were popes. I'm not 100% sure that that is what he did. If you read some of his works, maybe, I don't know, I haven't gone that deep into what he believed or didn't believe. I know that he asked for papal permission not to wear the robes anymore. And I know that um, he was extremely critical of uh, not just the popes, but he, in, in his book, Windswept House, he's basically calling them Satanists. Now, whether, you know, he was saying they were still validly elected or, or potentially validly elected or, I don't know, taking some really charitable uh, probationist type approach, I'm not sure. Um, but it's quite clear that they didn't agree at all with Vatican II. So, I don't know. I am, I'm, I'm not here to defend Lucky Martin's belief system. I'm not even sure what it was. Witherbear attempted to quiz the aging pastor who lives in my neighborhood about VP, asked about the church layout changes. 
He says, all that was dropped was traditions, not doctrine. It's a lie and repeat it every time. It's an absolute lie, and you should call him a filthy snake and a Satanist. He's obviously a Freemason, a liar, and a deceitful scumbag. And I don't care if he's 95 years old. He is, in fact, the older he is, the worse he is. Dilo um, laughs at hairy, large, fat, homosexual. But that's true. It, just go and look on the Urban Dictionary. That's what bear means. That's what bear has always meant for many, many years, since the 90s of at the very least, if not before. And Jerome advises Stanley to um, see Gnosticism as a statistic screeching, stay away from it. It gets weird the deeper you go, like the Masons. Uh, Jerome says, my paper is just history. I'm pretty sure I'm the first historian to write about it, so it will be positive either way. Oh, I'm afraid you're late to the party. I have written about all of that right in here. So you'll be the second to write about it, possibly. And there have been others that have written about it as well. Um, however, like uh, I've said to a couple of people recently, I am the foremost set of privationist or set of accountist in the world, second only to Mel Gibson. <laughs> um, Hugh Kellner says, what do the Italian people think of all the woke bullshit happening in the US? The average Italian, even the so-called woke ones, think that the U.S. is just a giant pile of crazy shit, um, which is pretty much what it is. The ones that are, uh, you know, a little bit more based will basically agree that uh, America is just like a, a huge sewage faucet that somebody should close up because they, they're just spilling their cretinity and nonsense all over the world um, due to their huge, huge, huge propaganda machine. But um, they should just, you know, build a wall around America and keep them in there. And Stanley says that that's true. When I see those people on Facebook, they all seem like demon-possessed schizos. And a lot of them might very well be. Um, you know, when you start to speaking coherently, hop from subject to subject like that, and just think about, oh, the secret knowledge and how you're the only one that knows it, yeah, it's not, these are not good signs. How do you recognize Gnostic ideas? I'm unclear on what, Wooly Ram, he's alive. I'm unclear on what Gnosticism looks like. Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson is a full-on, full-blown Gnostic. Um, he's an occultist, pretending to be some kind of uh, psychologist uh, slash, uh, I, I just want to talk about Christianity. I just read the Bible and then and, and, and you contradict me and I contradict myself every 20 seconds because that's what I do when I snort meth. Jordan Peterson is a very good example of a Gnostic. Tell us, tell us how you're doing, Wooly. Are you um, enjoying the fireworks or, or is it nasty down there? And Jerome says, all Europeans are agreed on one thing, that the U.S. is crazy. Not just crazy, but toxic, toxic. It's just outright toxic. And Janky says, all countries should ban American cultural exports. The most popular TV shows in Mongolia is Baywatch. Good God. That is a frightening, frightening thought. Michael Pecker, what's up with the New Age movement? From what I can discern, it is modern Gnosticism and Oriental obsession. Yeah. Gnosticism, paganism, a little bit of witchcraft thrown in, you know. Wouter says later, he's uh, leaving the office. Well, Wouter Bear, 
thank you for coming in when you could and have a good safe trip home. Wood is fine, no fireworks. <sighs> no fireworks, just a percussive background soundtrack. <laughs> Very good. Two and Bear says, I started to confront Polish internet orco celebrity regarding him praising God for De Verbum Vatican II. Oh, good, good, good. We should, we should fight back. Attack the heretics. And Janky says, last question. Best literary intro to Catholicism besides the Bible and maybe a refutation of Protestantism. Ah, well, at the risk of sounding like an arrogant bastard, I would say Believe, my little short book. Um, that book has resulted in like a lot of people going Catholic, getting baptized, uh, becoming set of privationists or set of cantists. And again, if you want, uh, you know, there you go. This is the this is the thick version of it. That there, I don't know if you can read the title. That's it. So you can get that. That'll give you a a pretty. Decent introduction into Catholicism and what it is. Oh, pardon me, and what it isn't. Uh, if you want to read a book for inspiration on on Catholicism, I would say that nothing comes. Well, I would say there are two books that are without equal. One is um, uh, the Crusades of Iron Men and Saints by uh, Harold Lamb. And the other one is 1565, The Great Siege by Erno Bradford. Uh, they're a brilliant book. Few and bear. So I was called heretic for calling Protestants heretics and not accepting Vatican II. <laughs> you, you can see the projection and the inversion, can't you? It's the upside down world. Wear it like a badge of honor, Pion. Holy Ram, as to Gnosticism, the word means knowledge. Gnostics obsess about hidden knowledge that only they chosen few can grasp. Yeah, that's that's the easy way to define it, I suppose. Dan Boone joined late, Hell Kurgan. I'll have to watch the earlier part of the stream later. Yeah, don't worry. And Pion Bear, my response was Magisterium of the Church wrong? In the past, calling out errors of Protestantism as heresies. What about hermeneutic of continuity in that context? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even bother arguing with those people. They're, they're just, I call them outright liars, frauds, and imposters. And may God blast them from their offices with lightning bolts. They deserve nothing less. And Bully says that my book is an easy read, feels more like a long conversation. Um, I'm guessing you're talking about belief, but possibly also about reclaiming the Catholic Church. Yeah, my, my books are not complicated reads, and they're pretty thorough generally. Grumpus Arrego says, a long conversation with solid humor. <laughs> well, I do try. I, I mean, I, I write the book pretty much as I talk, and believe um, was a, a lot more raw but uh, you know reclaiming the catholic church is, is not less you know, sarcastic in some points and uh, and so on but oh i am yawning and i'm quite tired um i don't know how long i've been going because um the timer started again once uh, once we had that little interruption But uh, yeah, so if you've got some burning question on Catholicism, fire it out now. Otherwise, I am going to say good night. It was just a short little stream, you know, under two hours. Ah, uh, Janky, you're most welcome. And sorry if I, you know, initially I, I thought you might have been a, a loose random gamma, but um, clearly you're not. So, and Puen says that Kurgan. That chat 
the uncle seems to be honest and pious, but not very intelligent and with theology degree. So badly educated. I'm not sure who you're talking about there, Pion Bear. Proclaiming is a long conversation. Yeah, it is. It's a long conversation, 530 pages. I believe it's less than 100 pages, and you know you can read it in two hours. Cordial Mitchell says, "Hail Kurgan, may you burn 10,000 heretics." Uh, those are rookie numbers. You got to pump up those numbers, man. You got to pump up those numbers. Those are rookie numbers. 10,000 heretics. Wooly Ram, I agree. Your style is very enjoyable to read. Oh, thank you very much. I, I might blush. Do you recall which saints were alive and active during the Protestant revolt? No idea. Oh, Romans 12.2, Hail Kurgan. Yes, Romans 12.2. I think you should finish the books before you review them, man. <laughs> but yeah, welcome. I'm afraid I'm, I'm about to say goodnight, though. Um, but, oh, I just can't stop yawning, and that's not a, an attractive look. And um, I've got... Another long day tomorrow, just like every other day. So I think I'm going to say good night and go to bed. But thank you all for coming here on such short notice. I do appreciate it. And uh, may you all have restful sleep and peaceful and fruitful interactions with like-minded people. And I hope those are all hardcore Catholics. You're most welcome. Thank you all, and uh, I wish you all a good night.